then after after uh, our Arkadiusz Kwiatkowski will have this little five minute break. So, Arek and music and George, big hand to you. Thank you so Thank much. You, Very interesting. Thank you, Karlin, for your question. And over to uh, Arek. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Arkadiusz Kwiatkowski, or for sure, Arek. Uh, I think that's going to make it a bit easier for you. So, again, my name is Arek. I live in nearly very, very heart of Poland between Krakow and Warsaw. And basically, today I'm going to talk to you about music. Music. But before I start talking about music, sorry, I need to set my uh, right thing here. Okay, before I st start talking about music, I need to introduce myself in a way. So basically, music uh, is a sort of my, my pa pastime, activity, hobby. And uh, because I've known Jana and Tony for years, so they gave me a ring one at one point and asked me whether I would be able to to uh, just have a short presentation about music in Poland. Uh, it's quite a difficult task because there are so many genres of music, yeah? And I was thinking which one to choose from. And I decided to go to the very roots. So now I'm going to share my presentation and basically I will get cracking on. Right, okay. So can you see my presentation? We can see your presentation, yes. Pan Arek. Just remember the audio, yeah? Did you put the audio yeah, on? Yeah, later, later on. Yes, yes. All right, yes. Okay. okay. But anyway, music in Poland, and I decided to subtitle that in the Slavonic key. And I, I got that sort of a uh, thing in my mind. I've heard a quote, which is basically, talking about music is like uh, dancing architecture. So I was thinking maybe I should sing it. But again, uh, probably I would do it out of key. So I'll talk the music today. And because the music is a, such a wide subject, I decided to go to the very roots of the music. And basically the very root is the folk music. Because uh, when you listen to music, either it's classical or it's jazz or sometimes popular music, it's always going to have that folk music uh, root in itself, right? Uh, so basically, because my presentation is going to be about 10 minutes uh, l short, so uh, at, the, at the end of my presentation I attached uh, links and if you felt like delving into treasure of our music, you may go to the links and just have a go and get some more information, yeah? But anyway, folk music uh, has its, its revival now. So there's many young musicians musician either in Poland or in Britain as well who decide to go that route and they start searching for the roots of our ancestors and they get it on board and sometimes put some sort of a new ideas into it so uh, uh, we've got it still everywhere everywhere around us there's some kind of a uh, sounds notes that are going to relate to 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 folk right so at the beginning, it was produced by amateur singers and music players, yeah? And most of the time, folk music was played at weddings, funerals, or various festivals. Uh, but the thing was that uh, musicians who produced the music couldn't write it down, okay? So that was the biggest problem because it was passed from generation to generation into in the spoken language. But there was always somebody who would, we would consider to be uh, someone who's very passionate about music. Oh, sorry. Okay. And that person in Poland was a 19th century ethnog ethnographer, folklorist and composer, uh, Oskar Kohlberg. Right? And uh, how, why he's very important uh, to a musical cultures to say because he was one of these uh, people who decided to write it down and he's managed to uh, write 33 volumes of books which have preserved our classical music yeah and there's around 12,000 songs which are preserved by him okay and because Oscar Kohlberg was born uh, about 25 minutes drive from where I live, yeah, that's why, uh, and obviously, not 
just because of this, but because the music, folk music, is so uh, popular in my region. That's why uh, about 10 minutes drive from here, you can go to a place called Szydłowiec, and Szydłowiec has got a folk instrument museum. Okay, so once you're there, you can see uh, all varieties of different uh, musical instrument that are going to be connected uh, to folk music like some some of them are very weird like hurdy gurdy or you know violin like the one you can see here it's got a trumpet here okay so uh, Oscar Tolberg was born in Przesucha and uh, that's why every year for the last uh, 40 years uh, there's a famous one day folk music festival so we've got music, musicians playing folk music on the stage, uh, stage singers as well as you can see there's people dancing different dances here. Yeah? Some of them are very uh, lively and you have to have a lot of stamina to carry on with them for more than five minutes. Yeah, but you know, uh, if you've got it in heart, you can do magic. Uh, but what's important about that Przesucha festival, and I find it very uh, interesting is the fact that in the local park you've got all the local musicians come in and basically they do sort of a folk music jamming and around them you've got a lot of people gathering and uh, there's a lot of dancing uh, sometimes sometimes maybe it may uh, be accompanied by kind of a uh, alcoholic drinks and at one point you know it's a one big uh, sort of a very positive uh, kind of uh, event, as to say, right? Okay, and have a look at this one. Uh, Jan Gatza, a renowned folk fiddler. Uh, I was the lucky one to, uh, uh, to see him a couple of times. And as you can see on his face, there's every possible experience there. Every, probably every wrinkle you can see has got a certain meaning. And uh, uh, Jan Gatza died about seven years ago, and he died being just 80. But look at his face. So uh, I think you can read the experiences from his entire life. Okay, and basically, um, the festival in Przesucha is just a one-day event, and it's more local. But if you want to see something more national, you go to Kazimierz uh, nad Wisłą, which is basically Kazimierz, uh, Kazimierz upon Vistula River, uh, which was set in the 16th century by our King uh, Kazimierz the Great. And there's, uh, every year there's a folk festival being held sometime in June, and uh, Jana and I were lucky one year to go there and participate and enjoy the beautiful music they they present. And you can hear all kinds of uh, folk music from different parts of, of Poland, obviously, and every part of Poland has got different, uh, how to say, give different line, different sound to it, yeah? Okay, but music is just dancing as well. So I decided to present you with some dances, and this one we've got Kujawiak, which is from the north of Poland, and um, as you can see on the photograph, it's a look at the co costumes, the folk costume, they're very colorful and it's a lively dance. The other one is Krakowiak, which is connected to um, the south of Poland. And uh, basically, if you ever been to Krakow and maybe you were lucky to uh, participate in any festivals, you could see uh, those kind of uh, things going on there, right? And then uh, the other one is Oberek. That's a very lively dance, and you have to be very fit. Fit, basically, it's a fid uh, fiddle to participate in this one. And obviously, if you want to see them, uh, there are going to be, there are, at the end of my presentation, you can, uh, you can have, you, you will have uh, links, you can follow them and see how it all is. Right? And uh, basically, because it's a, uh, Folk music and folk music, as I mentioned at the very beginning, my time's running. Folk music, as I mentioned at the very beginning, basically uh, is still very popular and it's taken on board by 
uh, folk music, uh, young folk musicians, yeah? And you can see here Capella Zepci Warszawa, which is Warsaw Village Band, and they made uh, folk music quite popular around the world because they travel around the world and play in different parts, uh, parts of the world, different continents, yeah? And then I'm going to jump into classical music because classical music is very important. And again, it's got a lot of classical roots as well, uh, folk roots is, uh, as well in itself. So here we've got our composers, Chopin, Moniuszko, Kilar, Penderecki, Lutosławski, and Gurecki, I find, I find them very important. And so basically I'll start with Moniuszko. Moniuszko is the 19th century composer and he's considered to be creator of the Polish national opera. And his opera, uh, which is um, the one haunted manor was staged uh, back in 70s in Bristol. So it's quite, uh, quite a nice thing that uh, uh, it was it was taken on board by British people. And then we've got Wojciech Kilar. Wojciech Kilar, I'm going to mention him. He's a contemporary, was contemporary composer because he died, but uh, when you think of them and you've ever uh, watched Dracula or The Pianist, his music was there. So he comp composed the music for the films. Okay, next one is Krzysztof Penderecki, died last year. I was lucky, I was the lucky one to participate in his uh, concert twice, I think. Okay, and when you think of them, uh, him, his music is far, uh, very gloomy, uh, very murky, but at the same time very emotional. And as you can see here, here he composed uh, he composed uh, the Paradise Lost by uh, Milton. That's opera composed by, by him. Okay, then we've got Henrik Gorecki, Henrik Gorecki, and his famous uh, Symphony Number no. Three. And basically, in 1993, it became a classical music hit, sold in 3 million copies. And as you can see, the British radio station Classic uh, uh, FM played it quite often at the time. And then we've got contemporary composer Vito, uh, Vito Lutosławski. Uh, so if you've ever been to the proms uh, or other classical music festivals in Britain, uh, there's a big chance that you could hear his music, his symphonies, four of them. Okay, and then obviously we got Chopin. Chopin uh, mm, was born not far from Warsaw, about 40 kilometers, and uh, uh, right at the age of 20, because he was a child prodigy, as, as far as piano was concerned, he left Poland and lived uh, for the rest in his life in, uh, in France but managed to visit, I think it was the last year of his life, uh, he managed to visit Britain and he played uh, for the Queen, Victoria, and gave uh, one gig in Edinburgh and one in Manchester, right? So then we've got, obviously, we've got Maximiuk. Maximiuk is still a live composer and he's known in Britain as Mad Max. Why? because he's quite eccentric and uh, he was running uh, BBC Scottish, uh, Scottish uh, Symphony for 10 years, between 83 and 93. And uh, he's one of these composers everyone should know, right? And then I'll go into jazz music because jazz is very important and it's sort of a export music as far as Poland is concerned. And uh, here I need to say something about Krzysztof Komeda. And Krzysztof, when you think about Krzysztof Komeda, you think about his Rosemary's Baby film uh, directed by Polanski, or the film which was directed in Britain by Polanski back in 60s, called The Sack. And obviously you may have seen The Knife in the Water. Right then we've got Michał Urbaniak, Michał Urbaniak, uh, for example, played with Miles Davis, and here you've got him playing with Nigel Kennedy uh, Quintet. Nigel Kennedy, obviously, that's a violin player. Right, and then Tomasz Stańko. Uh, Tomasz Stańko, one of uh, the best European uh, trumpet players, yeah? Died about three years ago, but um, yeah, he's very important as far as, far as uh, uh, European music is concerned, and there's 
I was the lucky one to uh, be at his gig uh, in 2003 in every mass theater in Cheltenham, right? And as you can see here, we were we took the photograph, and years later, I managed to be at his gig, and his his there's his photograph here. Okay, and then uh, last one, uh, Basia Trzecilewska, Basia Trzecilewska, uh, who's uh, more known in Britain as Basia. Uh, she was very popular at one point back in the 80s. She lived in London, and uh, I would I would compare her in terms of the sound of her music to a bit to Sade, right? So she was doing that sort of a Brazilian jazzy kind of music. Okay, and that's it. So we've got the links here. And uh, okay, basically folk music links, folk dance links, classical music links. So if you felt like uh, just having a go, yeah. Okay, and one, one more thing because can I, Jan, can I carry on? Because it's 15 minutes. Yes, please go yeah. on. We are, okay, so we are I've got one more thing here. Yeah. I wanted yes. to show you. I, I, right. I asked you to do it. Fantastic. Right. Okay, um, can you see that? Yeah, what? we can see it, uh, Arek. Did you remember the audio, though, yeah? Oh, right, sorry, sorry again. Okay, okay. one more time then, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah no problem. Yeah. I've got it. I'm glad I reminded you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Once you listen, uh, you listen to it, I'm going to print some information. Right, but can you see it now? No, probably not. All right, just give me a second again. Right, I'm there. Mm -hmm. Okay, audio. Right, where is it? Oh, I'm here. Right. Okay, I'm a very amateur trumpet player, but still I decided to blow my own trumpet, so uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. Brilliant. And here I will stop. Uh, basically, if you're interested, later on I, I may tell you something about the, the tune. Thank you very much. <laughs>